Hello there. Just wanted to give you a little update and tell you that the index has been sent off to the publisher and the editor there tells me that once that's typeset, uh, things should move pretty quickly. Uh, whether that means the book will still not come out till December or will come out soon, I, I really don't know. Um, but it, there shouldn't be any problems one way or the other. Uh, but who knows, you know, stuff happens. Anyway, it's coming. Uh, today I want to read a little bit of uh, chapter 3 for you, starting with the summary of chapter 3 uh, that I have in the introduction. So here goes. Chapter 3 examines in depth how Tolkien's falsification of Bilbo's original story in Riddles in the, in the Dark recontextualizes The Hobbit and makes it essential to the interpretation of The Lord of the Rings. For Bilbo's moment of horror and pity allows him to see Gollum as an individual. It thus averts tragedy by turning him away from murder toward mercy and establishes a landmark by which the text navigates through the story of Frodo and Sam and Gollum. Careful excavation of the layers of development of that encounter shows how Tolkien leveraged his own drafting and revising process to create profound uncertainties about the truth of the matter. Gandalf's efforts to awaken pity in Frodo serve instead to awaken fear, and truth which could lead Bilbo, excuse me, which could lead Frodo to pity and so offer him a measure of protection is the first victim of the ring. Okay, so now on to chapter three, the beginning of a section uh, which is entitled A Glimmer in the Dark. We began this study by examining the portrayal of Gollum we find in the first two chapters of The Lord of the Rings only. The reasons for doing this so were quite simple. First, there can be no certainty that first-time readers of The Lord of the Rings will have already read The Hobbit or even the prologue, nor indeed that they will ever read them. Second, Tolkien rewrote The Hobbit to suit the darker and more tormented creature into which Gollum had evolved in The Lord of the Rings, but he did not do so until Gollum had already entered the tale in The Taming of Smeagol. Thus, the portrayal of Gollum in The Lord of the Rings must be sufficient per se. It Bilbo's lie links the story of The Hobbit more closely to The Lord of the Rings than it would have been otherwise. And Gandalf's conversation with Frodo in the shadow of the past directs our attention, our attention back to it. The prologue to The Lord of the Rings, moreover, very openly addresses both versions of Riddles in the Dark and expects most readers to be familiar with one version, but not both. Indeed, the prologue declares that Bilbo never changed the original version of his story, even after publicly admitting that it was a lie. What is a straightforward narrative of how Bilbo came by the ring in each edition of The Hobbit now becomes a complex tale of open lies and silent dishonesty, theft and hatred, near murder and sudden pity, which reveals more about the corruption worked by the ring than either edition does if taken alone. We have also already seen how the recontextualization of The Hobbit shifts the perspective on Bilbo's actions after he escapes from Gollum with the Ring. Let us now look more closely at the 1937 and 1951 versions of Riddles in the Dark. In 1947, when Bilbo submitted his, provised, his proposed revisions to The Hobbit to Alan and Unwin, he added a handwritten note to the typescript, which said that, quote, if The Hobbit ran so, the sequel would be a little easier to conduct as a narrative, though not necessarily truer." Unquote. Those last few words make a fascinating comment in their suggestion that some doubt may attach even to the second version. It brings to mind how Bilbo is still attempting to justify how he got the ring many years after the wizard had harassed him into telling the truth and Gandalf emphasized the disturbing similarity of the lies Bilbo and Gollum each told about how they came by the ring. If, as Gandalf also says, Gollum is a liar and you have to sift his words, what does that mean for Bilbo, whom we also know to be a liar? 
It is quite possible that Bilbo never told the whole truth until the Council of Elrond, years after he had let the pet ring pass to Frodo. But only the morning after he had been bitterly confronted with the spiritual and moral effect his legacy was having on his heir. For only then can he say that he understands now and ask forgiveness for his lies. One might object that the simultaneous existence of two versions, the one a lie, the other not necessarily truer, was an accident owing to a misunderstanding by Alan and Unwin. Tolkien never heard back from his publisher about his proposed changes until the proofs of the second edition arrived in 1950, with his suggestions already incorporated into the text. As Hammond and Skull put it, quote, Tolkien seems to have forgotten about the revision, unquote in the long silence between 1947 and 1950. Yet, yet if so, it is a felix culpa. Tolkien quickly embraced the situation. Quote, the story as a whole must take into account the existence of two versions and use it. Unquote. He expanded the prologue and revised the main text to accomplish just that. So that's uh, enough for now. And uh, we'll be back in another week or, 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 t or two uh, with another chapter and hopefully some more news. And uh, we'll just take it from there. So uh, everyone enjoy your September.